Hey everyone, so we finally finished building our own GTX 1080 hybrid because one was not available at launch. So uh, it's a bit of a an interesting project. Some of it was done in a sort of getaway, but it does work very well. And I've got all the numbers for you. So I have everything from thermals, clock rate over time, and we've got fan RPMs as well for the VRM blower fan. So to quickly recap things, the past two videos went through the process of me taking this thing apart and then building it as it is now. We had some casualties along the way, but the original uh, sort of shroud looks like that. And that was over here where that EVGA part is now. And then this was the original heat sink, which we've replaced with the liquid block from EVGA. And that's a hybrid cooler, which originally shipped on this 980 Ti hybrid uh, that we took apart for this purpose. So this is running 980 Ti parts, which means that it's not really built for this. The cooler itself is fine. It's, it's the same mounting bracket, so everything works just fine there. The only thing that doesn't work is this faceplate from EVGA. Uh, this thing does not fit as we showed in our last video in part two because the reference design for the, uh, the outer side of the Founders Edition card is tessellated in a fashion that these screw holes no longer line up. So we could not use that, but that's purely aesthetic, so it doesn't matter anyway. I remounted the original uh, right side of the cooler for the Founders Edition just to give the VRM blower fan sort of a pathway to channel its air. That way it can at least cool the DRAM, the GDDR5X modules. But other than that, everything's done under liquid. So we've got that all set up for testing. So I actually think this looks kind of cool all said and done. It's really suboptimal the way it's built because you, you can't get away with this inside of a case. It's just not really going to work that well. We barely got away with it in our open air test bench. But I couldn't route the pump, the tubes out the top without removing this part of the shroud. And I really didn't want to do that because I wanted to direct the VRM airflow. So you need that for that. Uh, but it, it looks not bad really overall considering it's kind of a hack job. Speaking of hack jobs, here's part of the hack job. This was, I don't know if we even have, here's the other half of it. This uh, was part of the outside embellishments and it's dead now. So, uh, oops. But let's talk about the numbers. We've got the thermals first. So equilibrium temperatures, or that equilibrium as we call it to make it easy. These are the peak load temperatures averaged for the cards that you see right now. And the new hybrid, the GN hybrid we're calling it, runs at 18.66 Celsius Delta T for load and 1.95 Celsius Delta T for idle. And that's the GN hybrid. Then we've got 57.51 Celsius Delta T load for the Founders Edition card or the reference cooler. That's a massive difference. And once you factor in ambient again, it gets pretty close to the 80 plus range, which is where we saw some throttling we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, idle for the Founders Edition card is 7.96 Celsius. And that is a difference between load and load at uh, liquid versus air, a difference of 102% for the cooling potential for this card. So pretty good numbers there. Let's look at thermals over time. This presents the data in a different way. As you'll notice, the GTX 1080 GN Hybrid blows away the competition, and it's got a massive difference, but both of these temperatures for the Founders Edition and the GN Hybrid are sort of within general operability, because we're not overclocked yet, so they, they do technically both run just fine, and we need to look elsewhere for where we would benefit from this crazy Frankenstein project that we've created. And you don't really need a benefit, it's just fun to do. But one of those places is in overclocking stability. And as in the previous, the review we posted, you'll see that the clock rate actually does sort of fluctuate over time with some of the temperature increases. And so that's something we explored here. As a result of the liquid added onto this card, uh, liquid gives us a higher headroom for OCs, higher frequency potential. And that's because the 82 Celsius trigger, the threshold, isn't throttling down the clock rate before we can sustain for a long period that, that overclock. So that's one of the major issues is, yeah, you can create an overclock on the Founders Edition that's pretty darn high, but it might only be able to hold it for 10 minutes at a time, which is great if you're just running benchmarks and you don't endurance test it. But if you endurance test these things like we do, then it's not going to cut it. So we run a one to two hour endurance test, which is reasonable really for review purposes. And this chart shows the clock rate versus time. So this is a pretty interesting one. This is overclocked. The GTX 1080 chokes on its thermals and begins spiraling once it's racked up heat over a period of an hour long test. 
and 82 Celsius is that threshold for thermal reduction, for a clock rate reduction on the GPU pursuant to thermals. You can see that the clock rate remains stable for a good 10 plus minutes, but starts choking after that. The clock rate recovers about 15 minutes later, and these dips translate in the real world to severe screen sort of uh, artifacting. You'll get either artifacts or flickers or black screens or just frame drops if it's fluctuating up and down really fast, which it does in the beginning of the chart. It just bounces up and down between frequencies. Sometimes the range is only 60, 70 megahertz, but that's still enough to see a reduction in your frame times and that translates to in-game performance. Let's look at the next chart. The First of all, the more stable clock rate on the OC card, uh, the hybrid OC card is major and allows us to sustain these higher clock rates, but because the CLC keeps the 1080 below 20 Celsius Delta T, which is 40 something when you factor back in ambient, because it keeps it there, we're able to run with a fan RPM auto-controlled at around 27 to 30% for the VRM blower fan. And of course, this thing, this 120 millimeter fan does produce its own noise, but one, it's uh, able to spin slower anyway because it's a larger fan so it can push more air. And two, it's, it's really not that bad. The noise is less obnoxious than a VRM blower fan fluctuating between 20 something percent and 55%, which is what you get with the Founders Edition. And we don't get that here. It stays perfectly flat at about 27% for the blower fan, so that's a good thing for noise levels. Now, the new overclock results, so originally I was kind of uh, let down because the Founders Edition card only overclocked to uh, 2020 megahertz to 2050 megahertz. It had a range of about 30, and that's because of the frequency intolerance from thermals. Uh, so that's where we were stuck at before, and that's not, it's, it's really not bad, but I was disappointed in it. So our new overclock, we landed at, uh, we had a couple numbers here. I'm gonna read them off to you. Maximally, we hit 2202, 2202 megahertz in Fermark, which there's a disclaimer there in a second, uh, but we had to cheat the voltage away from the memory. So in order to hit that core clock, I basically reduced the memory clock maximally to negative 500 something megahertz. That gave us some extra voltage to pull away for the core clock. We were able to sustain it in Fermark. It did not even come close to being sustained in games. So that is a wash, that's no good. Uh, we can't really count that as successful. So games were still crashing because the fluctuation was uh, was not tolerable to the GPU. And then our final overclock was 2164 megahertz. I think that's a plus 275 megahertz offset. And the memory OC was 600 megahertz stable. And we were able to actually push 900 megahertz in Fermark, but not in games. So for games, 2164 with 600 OC on the memory, not as impressive as 2202 but a damn lot better than the 2025-ish to 2050 megahertz we had on the Founders Edition card. So significantly, personally more satisfying overclock, of course, but how does it translate into gaming is the final question here. Doom at 4K, we see 62.33 FPS versus 59 FPS. 1% and 0.1% lows are basically identical. And that's a 5.5% difference. Doom 1440, 111 versus 109, a 1.8% difference. Mordor at 1440, 116 versus 113, a 2.6% difference. And Mordor at 4K, 66.3 versus 65, about 2% difference. And then finally GTA 5 at 4K, 66.3 versus 65 FPS, again, about a 2% difference. So these overclocks, in terms of real world gameplay, you're not really gaining a whole lot. If, if you're doing this because you wanna get more FPS, uh, spoiler alert, it's like one or two FPS and it's not worth your time at all. But that's not why we did it. We did it because the overclock is sustained better over long periods. So we can run that higher clock. We can even run the, uh, the original clock rate we had better because of that. So we have less fluctuation in the clock overall, which means fewer uh, reductions in frame times or fewer reductions in frame rate as the clock stabilizes for thermals. It means that the VRM fan runs much slower, so it's quieter. Uh, the GPU itself is way cooler, useful for a lot of reasons. One is longevity and two is just general heat in the case or in the system. You're pushing all that heat out here. There's of course heat generation in the, in the wires, but you push a lot of it out the radiator and so that means it's not getting dumped into your case by uh, another type of fan. So those are all good things. Mostly we just, I like seeing the inside of the card and seeing how it builds and how it breaks. Uh, so. Overall, a fun project, would do it again, would not recommend it if you're trying to get FPS gains. If you care about noise and thermals, it's a great project to do. 
but really you should just wait for, of course, properly supported liquid coolers so you don't end up with this crazy, uh, you know, hybrid of 980 Ti and 1080 that we did. Uh, I'm happy with it though. If you like this stuff, comments below. We'll try and do more of these in the future. Pretty fun lab project build type thing. But thank you for watching. Patreon link in the post video if you want to help us out directly with future projects like this. And I'll see you all next time.